Most of us have flown on a plane. You board, find your seat, stash your bag, buckle up. And a few hours later, you're landing in a new city, maybe a new country. But behind that smooth experience is a highly choreographed operation, one involving dozens of professionals, intricate systems, and hundreds of precise steps you never see. So what actually happens during a commercial flight? From the moment you buckle up to the moment the wheels touch the ground, we're breaking down every stage, what the pilots are doing, how the plane operates, and what's happening behind the scenes at 35,000 feet. By the end of this video, you'll never look at flying the same way again. Let's get into it. Your flight actually starts hours before you even reach the gate. Pilots arrive early for a full pre-flight briefing. They review weather patterns across the entire route, analyze fuel needs with dispatch, check the aircraft's maintenance logs, and plan for alternate airports in case of emergencies. Before passengers board, the captain or first officer does a full walk-around inspection, checking for fluid leaks, bird strikes, tire wear, panel damage, pitot tubes, and sensors. Meanwhile, the cabin crew is doing their own set of checks, emergency equipment, oxygen bottles, door seals, smoke detectors and lavatories, life vests and evacuation slides. And out on the tarmac, maintenance and fueling crews are doing their part, verifying engine performance, checking tire pressure, refueling the aircraft with precise calculations for weight and range. By the time you're scanning your boarding pass, the cockpit has already run several checklists, spoken to ground control, and reviewed your flight's entire journey. Once boarding is complete and doors are closed, the aircraft pushes back from the gate, but we're not quite flying yet. Taxiing may seem simple, but it's highly coordinated. The pilots are now in contact with ground control, who act like ground-based air traffic conductors, guiding every plane across a busy airport, like playing a massive game of 3D chess. Before reaching the runway, the pilots run the final checklist. Flaps and slats are extended for takeoff, auto brake is set, transponder is active, cabin is pressurized, lights are set to full brightness. Then comes takeoff clearance, engines throttle up to full power, and in about 30-40 seconds the aircraft reaches the critical V1 speed, the point of no return. If something goes wrong before V1, pilots can abort. After V1, they're committed to fly. Next comes VR, rotate speed, where the nose is lifted and the plane takes off. Even this part is calculated down to the second, including the climb angle, engine thrust, and how much fuel is being used per minute. Once in the air, the aircraft begins its climb phase, typically lasting 15, 20 minutes depending on the route. During this time, the pilots remain busy, switching radio frequencies between control zones, monitoring engine temperatures and fuel flow, managing airspeed and pitch, activating autopilot but not hands-off, more on that in a second, talking to multiple ATC regions as they move through different airspace blocks. Eventually, the plane levels off at its cruising altitude, usually between 30,000 and 40,000 feet. So what are pilots doing now? Contrary to what some might think, they're not just sitting back and relaxing. They're monitoring fuel balance between tanks, weather updates and turbulence reports, pressurization in cabin systems, communications with dispatch, systems for faults or unusual data, nearby aircraft via radar. Pilots are required to maintain situational awareness at all times. And yes, they do take turns resting during long-haul flights, but there are always at least two in the cockpit. While the cockpit manages the skies, the cabin becomes its own mini-city in the sky. Air pressure drops dramatically outside, so the aircraft's pressurization system ensures you're breathing comfortably at the equivalent of 6,000, 8,000 feet. Air recirculates every two or three minutes through HEPA filters, removing 99.97% of airborne particles. Wi-Fi, entertainment systems, and lighting are all tied into satellite and aircraft systems that sink after reaching a certain altitude. But what are flight attendants doing beyond service? A lot more than you might think. They're trained in over 100 emergency scenarios, CPR, first aid, handling fires or smoke in the cabin, managing disruptive passengers, and even delivering babies. 
You might think descent starts when the captain makes the announcement, but they've already been planning it 30 to 40 minutes earlier. Descent begins with a request to ATC to enter the arrival corridor. Pilots manage energy by adjusting speed, engine thrust, and aircraft weight. Yes, even by redistributing fuel. Flaps begin to extend in stages to increase lift while reducing speed. Spoilers, those panels on the wings, may deploy to create drag. Cabin lights dim for landing, which helps your eyes adjust to outside light in case of an evacuation. That bong you hear? It's a signal for crew readiness, not just to check seatbelts. Landing may feel like the dramatic ending, but for pilots, it's all about energy management. Speed must drop gradually without stalling the aircraft. Flaps and slats are fully deployed to increase drag and lift. Landing gear lowers, adding more drag. Pilots follow a precision glide path to ensure a smooth descent in most modern airports. Aircraft use ILS, instrument landing systems, which allow precise approaches even in poor visibility. Touchdown happens at a designated aim point, typically about 1,000 feet down the runway. Pilots use reverse thrust and carbon brakes to slow the plane down. And yes, a hard landing isn't always bad. On wet or short runways, a firm touchdown ensures traction and safer braking. You've landed, but the flight isn't over for the crew. Pilots switch to ground control to get taxi clearance, hydraulic, anti-ice, and electrical systems are powered down step by step. The shutdown checklist ensures everything is safe before pilots leave the cockpit. Meanwhile, the cabin crew prepares for deplaning, assists with mobility needs, conducting a final sweep for lost items or suspicious materials. On the ground, maintenance and turnaround teams are already working, fueling for the next flight, cleaning the cabin, re-catering food and drinks, and inspecting systems for faults. All of this happens in under 40 minutes at many major airports. Every flight leaves a detailed paper trail. Pilots complete a flight log, which includes departure and arrival times, fuel consumption, weather encountered, altitudes and routing any maintenance alerts. All this data goes to the airline's database for safety reviews, fuel efficiency tracking, and maintenance planning. And yes, the black boxes are recording the entire time. There are two cockpit voice recorder, CVR, and flight data recorder, FDR. These devices are incredibly durable and play a critical role in accident investigations. So next time you fly, remember, behind every smooth flight is a highly trained team, a complex web of systems, and a level of planning you rarely see. Commercial aviation may look effortless, but it's anything but simple. If you learned something new, give this video a like, subscribe for more deep dives into the world of aviation, and check out the rest of the series. And let me know in the comments, what part of flying should we explain next? Thanks for watching and safe travels.